is about image warping and image rotation. Actually, rotation is just a particular case of warping. And warping is just a general uh, name for any geometrical transformation. And I, you know, I like to start with an example. So let's start with this example. So let's start with this. So let's say that uh, you're given a pair of images. So let's say that uh, this is the Cathedral of Paris. We have a, a pair of pictures of, of the same object. And now uh, you want somehow to find what is the transformation. So you have two images. So let me go here. I want to be here. So you are given a pair of images. So you are given image one. Uh, actually, let's, let's call it I source. So let's say that in I source, this is your uh, image, and you have I tag. Target looks like this. So, what you want to find is a correspondence between points. So, you want to find a transformation such that this point goes to there, this point goes to there. And in general, for any R coordinate in the source, you apply a transformation, let's call that transformation phi, and you get a coordinate in the target. So that is what you want to find. Once you have these transformations, uh, you know how to, uh, you, you will have to interpolate uh, one thing. Is, let's say that I want to make isos to look like I target. So once you have the transformation, you can transform this one and produce one that is with this image, but in the same position as this one. Okay. So, this would be I source uh, transform. Okay, so you transform each one of these coordinates, and then you have it in the same uh, orientation as, as the time. Okay, so that is what we will do. So we have this pair of images, and we will try to find what are the correspondences points and then uh, we will apply this transformation and there are way, a number of ways of trying to identify which points are equivalent and uh, we will not see the details of these ones but for instance this sieve they're based actually on things that you already know so they are kind of uh, band pass filters and then finding local maxima in the band pass filter image and this kind of stuff and, and then uh, there will be many possible correspondences, and then this ransack is a way of trying to see which point corresponds to, to which. Uh, we will not see the details of ransack. And, and then, uh, hopefully, this uh, we will have to decide soon. Takes a bit more than I expected. Uh, otherwise, if it takes too long, you can look for the solved, uh, solved cases. This is a different one. So let's say this is a, let me see, one, roughly so. Let's go for this. 
So we have this image and we have uh, So how full detail looks. Uh, so we have there? Yeah. So we have this image, we have this one, this kind of similar, but it has been shifted a bit. And then we find the correspondences. And here we don't have the points, but uh, can imagine this point goes to this point, and this point goes to this point, and so on. And, and then uh, we, uh, we can interpolate one of them. So, yeah, here it is. So, here we have correspondences. So, for instance, this point, it has been incorrectly assigned to this one. Okay. This one has been assigned, so this one, this blue one, has been assigned to this one. This is correct. This one has been incorrectly assigned to, to this one. So almost correct. And this one to this and so on. So these are the comparisons. Okay. And here are all possible matches. So this ransack, this ransack is, is a way of choosing of all these possibilities, which are the ones that are more trusted. So these are the ones that are more trusted. And, and then once you have the transformation, you can you can transform it. I don't know what this query target is, but only it is the reinterpolation. So this is the target, and this is the reinterpolation of, of the query. Uh, I, I call it source. So the query image or the source image you reinterpolate to make it look alike the target. And here we didn't succeed quite quite, quite much, but uh, by playing with these uh, parameters, so you can try, okay, so let's, instead of the sieve, let's try these are kind of key descriptors. And, and also we can use this one, you can try different parameters and, and see if you can get a better result. It is a difficult case, this one. Okay, because uh, two images is, are of the same object, but they, they are quite different. So finding the correspondences are not easy, and you saw it here when you try to, to look for uh, the equivalent points. The equivalent points, they are almost correct, but not quite. Okay, so uh, that means that this transformation phi, that the key is in the transformation phi. How do you find this transformation? Okay, that, that is the key. Okay, so that is what we will see uh, today in today's lecture. Okay, and, and that is why it is important is how not to do it. Okay, okay so yeah, so the structure is what we have already mentioned. So you have an input image, you have a, a warping function, this is our phi function that transforms coordinates. And once you know where each one of the coordinates go, you can do you, you can interpolate your function and then you will produce an output image that is in the right position. Okay, so yeah, all this is is I think we will see in more detail now. So, yeah, so let's say that uh, you have this image and, and this image has a problem that is, it is affected by a perspective transformation. So you see these towers should be straight and they don't look like a straight, they, they look like uh, tilted uh, towers. So you see it is tilted to the left, tilted to the, sorry, to the right, to the left. And this is the straight. So let's try. Th this is because of the camera and the perspective. Okay, so let's try to put it straight. So let's try to put it like this. So this is our target. This is our source of query. 
and, and then we have to find corresponding points. So these are the points that we will use to find our transformation. So these points here, these points here, they will be transformed to something else. Okay, and this something else are these coordinates. Okay, so you need to find correspondences between points. So and these transformations are very easy. So these three points will stay. So these three points, the coordinates are exactly the same. While these three other points, these three other points, they will be. Okay, so let's see. So uh, So this was the original image. So look at this uh, tower. So this tower, this is the x-axis. So the x-axis here, it is at coordinate 52, while at the top, it is at coordinate 80. So that is why it is, like, it is uh, shifted to the, to the right. So what we have to do is to make the height is, is fine. Sorry. So the, the height is fine, but the x coordinate is not. So what I will do is to move this 80 to 52 again, so that now the tower looks straight. Okay, so you see, we move the 80. So we move the 80 to 52. Okay, yeah, and we do the same with the others. So, this here, 872 moves to 913. That is the same coordinate that we have down here. Okay, so these are our correspondences. So, uh, what we have are pairs of coordinates. So, in this setup, what we have is uh, so we have a color in this uh, a coordinate in the source. Let's say coordinate one is equivalent to coordinate one of the target. And then you have another pair. Coordinate two in the source is coordinate two in the target. So we have many of these correspondences. In our slide, we have yeah. so we have six points and the corresponding values in the target. And in the case of the cathedral, we had many more points. Okay. So how we can uh, how we can try to solve this problem? Okay, so we are transforming coordinates. So if we are transforming coordinates, here he's using x for the source, y for the target. I prefer my, my notation because this u and v, we, we uh, kept them, we kept them for coordinates in, in the frequency space. So what we can try is, okay, why not to look for a matrix such that Okay, so let's look for a matrix such that um, the target point, so the target is this matrix A times the source coordinate. So this is a two times one vector, this is a two times two matrix, and this is a two times one vector. And, and then I can put, so this is a vector like this, so let's say this is x of the target 1, y of the target 1, x of the target 2, y of the target 2, all the points up to, I don't know, 6 in our case, so x of the target 6, y of the target 6, this is h, that is two times two matrix. And then the same, but now in the source. So x of the source one, y of the source one, x of the source two, 
y of the source to x of the source of 6, y of the source of 6. So we try to solve this problem. And how many equations do we have? How many unknowns we have? How many equations? Six. Six. So we have six points, but for every point we have two coordinates. So do we have six equations or twelve equations? Twelve equations, because we have two coordinates for each one of them. How many unknowns? Which are the nouns of this? Which are the nouns of this uh, equation system? The age. The coordinates we know, but we don't know the transformation. So we have to solve for age. So in general, if we call this. Uh, let's say. Let's come back to this. So let's say that this is a map. This is these are the coordinates. Uh, matrix T, this is the source coordinates S, and we have T equal H times S. And this is a, an over-determined, an under-determined uh, equation system, over or under determined. This over-determined, because we have more equations than unknowns, so it is over-determined. And you already know what is the, the solution of this kind of over-determined systems? This this is worse. Has appeared a few times. So we solve it by least squares. So to solve it by least squares, what we have to do is to multiply by by the right by S transpose. So we want to solve for it. So we multiply by S transpose on both, on both sides. So let's let's look at the sizes of these things. So, it's the most different for all of these. so let's look at the sizes. So this is a matrix that is two times six. This is two times two. This is two times six. Okay, so now this is two times six. This is six times two. This is two times two. Uh, two times six. Six times two. So this block here is two times two. So if that is two times two, I can invert it. So now I can invert that and put it on the other side. So it will be target source transpose S S transpose minus one on H. Now we know what is my H. So this is a Simple thing. And you know, this is least squares solution. Least squares solution of that equation system. So that is the age that minimizes. So it is the age. So it is the age that minimizes the argument, that minimizes the respect to age. Minimizes t minus h s with respect to h. Okay, this has appeared. This this thing has appeared a few times across the along the course. Okay, so with a different notation, but this is what he will do. Okay, so once you have the h, I can actually. It is interesting that once you have the age, you have the way to go on both directions. So you have, I don't know where my images are. Yeah, here. So age goes in this direction, but age minus one goes in this direction. So given a source point, can multiply by h, and then I have a target point. But if you have a target point, you multiply by the inverse of h, and then you have a source point. So the, the key thing is how to transform coordinates. And a, a matrix multiplication is a very simple transformation. It is a very simple file. 
Okay, so yeah, I can go now in both directions. So given the target, I can multiply by h minus one and have source coordinates. And, and then I can interpolate my my image. So this one here, actually, this one is by my okay, so what I have to do is I know how to go in both directions. So one possibility I we have again seen this a few times in the resize one, for instance. So what you do is for every point in the, in the transform, so for every point in the transform image, you see where it is coming from. So this one is coming from here, this one is coming from here, this one is coming from there. Okay, and this is given by h minus one, and in general by the inverse of the function five. Okay, and then you only have to reinterpolate here. And now we. Not, not for the moment. Uh, so for the moment, it looks fine, and we will see why it is wrong. So, what I'm confused. What you're explaining is the way to do it or the way not to do it? It is not the way to do it. So, it looks fine, but that is a problem, and we will see this problem now. The problem is that the result is not good enough, and we will see why. Okay, so uh, so yeah, we can go both ways, and now we understand this comment here. So this is action. So you have to find so this is your working function. So what is a file, and then once you know how to go from the target to the source, you interpolate the source. Um, interpolation, we saw it in the last lecture. So now, <coughs> working function is the H. The working function is not the H, but is related to H. So, the function, a matrix is not a function. Okay? This is a function. This is a function. Okay? And then, if you want to put it more like a function, right? this is a function. H alone is not a function. Okay, good. Then uh, we are here. Yeah, so you see the same kind of stuff that we were having. I, I think it is more clear in my notation where we see clearly what the, the coordinates are for. So x are coordinates in the source, y are coordinates in the target. And, and this is just a, a interpolation. So that's fine. And the problem is that when you try to do it, uh, okay, you find your age. And this age is, is very interesting. Look at the age. So the age has this uh, so the age for this particular problem, let's, let's see if it makes sense. So the age here looks like this. It is 1.02 minus 0.02 uh, and 0.1. Okay, so when I multiply, when I have, let's use this color again, so when I have R uh, in the target, that is h times x in the source and y in the source. And multiply by this, what will I get? So I will have 1.02 x x minus 0.02 y x and then y x. So that means the height stays, and it is only the x that is moving. That is what we wanted. So we wanted. Our transformation, the height was staying fixed while the x was moving. The x is moving, but the y is not. 
So that is what this H matrix is making. So the Y doesn't move, it's still one. So it doesn't move. The X is moving. Okay, or this one doesn't move. Okay. okay, good. Then why not to do it? Why why this is wrong? Because if we apply to the image, this is this is the original, so Red, this is the original image, so red is where the tower was, blue is where we want the tower to be, and this is what we get. So just a little bit of improvement. So here, just a little bit, here a little bit better, it's halfway. Okay, so that is the reason why this is not the right way, because the results are not good. And now we can think why the results are not good. And the reason is that perspective is a 3D transformation. So it is something that happens in 3D. While our transformation, this age, is only 2D transformation. So it is just uh, actually uh, we can see if we can find a, a nice representation of this. Find transformation. So I'm, I'm sure uh, this is not. Yeah. So let's look at this. I want to see it bigger. So let's go to medium. So <coughs> transformation. Okay, so now we can see let's let's say that we have this image. This image if the transformation is, is let's look at only at this part okay the, the rest of the the rest of the uh, of the matrices we will understand uh, later but if it is an identity so that means that the image doesn't change uh, let's look at this one so it is almost it is a diagonal matrix, and this diagonal matrix it has two factors. So it has factor W and factor H. So the, the zero one square now moves or enlarges to the W H uh, square. And then we have the rotation matrix, and then we have shearing. So shearing is this operation. Okay? And then we have shearing X, we have shearing Y, we have reflections. So for example, this, uh, yeah. So we have reflections. So, so if you think of this transformation here, so this is the age. Okay. So we now our age is like this. So our age is minus one, zero, zero, minus one. So then my transform my my target. So what is the target for this? So R the target is minus X of the source minus Y of the source. So that means that if I have an image, this is the origin, and in the source it looks like this, in the target it will be reflected. Okay, so our transformation is 2D, while perspective is something that happens in 3D. So we don't have enough degrees of freedom to express our transformations. So how we, what is the right way to do it? And yeah, this is about how to invert the matrix. We don't care. Yeah, that is something here. 
So we have to invert this matrix. Okay, so invert this matrix. So I can express this H. So this is something nice of the interpreting any any transformation matrix transformation. So let's say that our matrix is where so I have H that is a, a transformation. Okay. Uh, you know the eigenvalue decomposition, right? Do you remember the eigenvalue decomposition? The eigenvalue was P V P minus one. So and P was a matrix of eigen eigenvectors. So we have eigenvector one, eigenvector two, and so and this was a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues. And then we have this matrix uh, inverse. Okay. And um, this is eigen decomposition. Eigen decomposition. There are many ways to decompose a matrix. Some other way is these are called eigenvalues. Instead of eigenvalues, you can decompose it in something that are called singular values. Singular values. Single value, single value, the composition. The composition. Now, the matrix is still composed like this. We use the same notation as in the slide. US transpose. USP transpose. And this is more general than this one. So this is only for n times n matrices. And this is in general. So this can be applied to any uh, matrix of any size. But in the particular case of square matrices, so this will be 2 times 2. This is 2 times 2. And this is 2 times 2. So this is just for a square matrices. So this is the equivalent of the eigen decomposition. Um, but it has a property. This one and these ones are all for normal matrices. And do you remember what the norm for normal matrices is? It was a matrix such that U, U transpose is I and U transpose U is also I. This is, this is not, this is, it's on this side. Okay, so if that is an orthogonal matrix, that means that this is a rotation. Remember what the matrix of a rotation looks like. So, the matrix associated to a rotation, theta. Something that rotates, coordinates, theta degrees is this one cosine of theta minus sine of theta, sine of theta, cosine of theta. This is theta. And this matrix is our phenomenon. So, SVD decomposition, what it does is first the rotation in one direction. Then this is the diagonal matrix. Okay, so this, this is like this one. It, has, it is only diagonal. And then another rotation. So this transformation that we have done, so this we have done there, can be composed in these three matrices. So this one, this one, this one. And it has the right structure of rotation. It is cosine minus sine, sine, cosine. And here it is the same cosine minus sine, sine, cosine. So they are rotation matrices. Uh, and 
and the, and the S, the diagonal matrix, is like this. Okay, so what does it mean? So you have to <coughs> first rotate 19 degrees. So if you look, what is theta for this rotation? It's 19 degrees and 19.6. Then you scale. So first you rotate, then you scale. You see, that is a, see, the scaling factor. This is a scaling x, this is a scaling y. And then you you rotate back minus 19 degrees. <coughs> so this transformation that we have done here to go from the original image to this one, it is uh, it can be explained in this way. First you rotate, then you scale, and now you rotate back. And this can be done with any affine transformation. So with any uh, transformation that can be expressed as a matrix. So all matrix transformations, they can be understood in this way. This first you rotate, then you, you stretch or you scale, then you rotate back. And this is given by this, this, this decomposition. So when you take the, your matrix, you decompose it in this way, and now you understand it is rotation followed by a scaling followed by an adaptation. All matrix transformations are like this. Okay, so we said, uh, okay, perspective transformations are 3D, so, and, and with only an edge that is two dimensional, we are not, uh, we don't have freedom, enough freedom to correct for it. Okay, so this is now the right way to correct for these kind of transformations. Okay? But this is correct in the, in the sense of four perspectives. So what we have learned so far is good. So this is a, a good way of thinking, but not for perspective transformations, because perspective is 3D. And we come back to, to this idea of image formation that was at the very beginning. So you need to know how your image is formed. So if your image is formed by taking a 3D object and projecting it to a, to a plane, there's a 3D transformation in there. So there is a 3D projection on 2D, and then uh, everything you do has to be adapted to that uh, to that image formation code. And we'll do it after the break. Do we do that? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we are here. So now let's see how to do it. Okay, so the first thing we will do is to put, to expand our coordinates to something called homogeneous coordinates. Okay, so let's see what these homogeneous coordinates are. So let's say, <coughs> let's say that you have a, a coordinate. Okay. So let's say that we have a coordinate. Our coordinates today are very good. So we have a, vector x, y, and then I will transform it to x, y, k, k, k. Okay, so I will represent this point as this one for any k, k, for any k, uh, for all k, k different from zero. So you take any k. And now, this point will be represented by this other. Now, this is 2D, this is 2 times 1, this is a 3 times 1. So let's say that you are given one of these points. So I'm given coordinate U, V, W in uh, homogeneous coordinates. So homogeneous coordinates we will represent with the tilde. So this is a coordinate R. This is the homogeneous coordinate, corresponding homogeneous coordinate. So let's say that we are given an homogeneous coordinate, which is the point that it is represented. So what is the R? 
by the two percent. Right? It's very easy. So you have to divide by the third one. So you divide by this, and then that is the two D coordinate that it is represented. So now uh, the simplest k is k equal one. K equal one is pretty simple. The divisions are trivial. So why not using one? So this is what we are doing here. So given the coordinate, we will add in one. And now uh, we will have a, we will have a 3D point. And now our transformation will be 3D. So we will do that with the target. We will do that with the target coordinates, with the source coordinates. So we have we have a source coordinate, but now it is uh, homogeneous. We multiply by h, and then we will have a homogeneous coordinate in the target. And now let's see. So this is three times one. This is three times one, and this is three times three. So before I had only I don't know what it is. But before we had k. So before we had two times two degrees of freedom. So I only had four parameters to find these matches between transformation between points. But now, because I have played this trick of going up to um, homogeneous coordinates, now I now I have nine parameters to play. So I have nine parameters, I still have 12 equations. So still it is an overdetermined equation system. So I can find these, these nine uh, parameters. Actually we will see we, we need less than nine. Because this age, because these coordinates are homogeneous, this age cannot be anyone but uh, it has to fulfill some constraint. Okay, so yeah, we will do the same thing. So we will have our source coordinates in homogeneous coordinates. We will have, we will multiply by this matrix. Then we will have some uh, homogeneous coordinates, but now in the target space. And now this target homogeneous coordinates have to be the same as the ones that we are given for the correspondences. Okay, so yeah, and then we can construct our matrix of homogeneous coordinates in the target space. So these are the coordinates in the source, coordinates in the target, and these are homogeneous, these are homogeneous, but now the k's are three for each one of the, of the points. So here the k is equal to one for all points, but here it is free. It can be whatever. Okay. Uh, let's try to to see for each point of these. So each one of these points. What is the two D coordinate that they are representing? Okay. So this is our transform. So we have x, y, 1, we multiply by h. So when you multiply, this is what you get. And this will be your target coordinate. And now we can play the same, the, the, the following trick. So we divide the first and second equation by the third equation. Okay, so we divide the left hand side and we divide the right hand side. So when we divide the left hand side, we have is ui and vi, these two. And when we divide the right hand side, what we have is this in the numerator, this one in the denominator, and this one in the numerator, this one in the denominator. This is what we have there. And now, these are homogeneous coordinates, so h cannot be whatever. So one of the constraints is that H33 has to be 1. Okay, So H33 is 1. So we divide uh, 
the numerator and denominator by H33. So let's, let's click here. So we have something like, we have something like this. So we have UI because H11 XI plus H12 YI plus uh, H13. Now divided by H31 XI plus H32 YI plus H33. H is our amount. Okay. Now I divide here by H33. Here I also multiply by H33. So now what we do we have? So now what we have is the following. So we have H11 divided by H33 XI plus H12 H33 YI plus H13 H33. That's it. And now divided by H31 H33 XI plus H32 H33 plus 1. But now, H is in a noun. So I'm dividing, but actually I can call this H11 prime, and I can call this H12 prime, H13 prime, H31 prime, H32 prime. And, and I can drop the primes. So H is a matrix that I, I don't know yet how it looks like. So I can drop the primes, and that is what has to happen here. Okay. So when you divide by H33, you get one where H33 was, but the other ones has not been affected. So the, the process has been this one. So you create the primes, but then you know the primes. Actually, you know what age looks like. So it uh, doesn't matter if you're putting uh, age or age prime. Okay, so that is what has been done in that slide. Okay, now uh, this is just rewriting. So we take the denominator, we put it on the, on the left side. So we do that, and we rearrange all the terms. So we have it here, we put it in matrix form. So our nouns are the eight. So here this H vector, we have H11, H12, H13, H31, H32, so on. So yeah, you see that, yeah, actually it is H11, H12, H13, H21 is there, but it is not here. We will see it. H22 is there, but it is not here in this equation, so we put zero. Same for H23. And now H31, H32, and uh, the last element of this vector is one. I think the last element is one. Okay, so now we have an equation system again. So for every point, for every pair of points, so this point goes to this, this point goes to this. So for every pair of points, we have a couple of equations. And these are the two equations that we have. And now it is simply. Okay, so we now put together all the pairs. So in our example, we had six pairs. So this is given from the first pair, second pair, and the sixth pair. So this is a matrix. Now you have to find this. You have to solve A, H equals zero. You solve for H. Okay, and yeah, we will not go into the details of the, of the solution, but it also uses this SPD decomposition. And then, uh, and then, you find 
in this diagonal matrix, you find what is the smallest uh, singular value. So one of these will be the smallest one. And then the H is the eigenvector, or not the eigenvector, the, the K, so let's say that the, the smallest one here is K. Okay, so this one, the number three, is the smallest. Okay, so now you go to matrix B. You take the B column, the, the K column, and that's that's your solution. We will not see why this is this is like this. This is just algebra, uh, but we we understand the process. Okay, so uh, yeah, so once you know what is your age, now you can do the same thing as you did before. So now you have age that goes in homogeneous coordinates, but it goes from source to target. So it's somewhere here. Here it is. So maybe bigger again. So now we have our age. And our age goes from source to target, but now in homogeneous coordinates. And now we have not nine uh, degrees of freedom because we have sacrificed one because it is a continuous coordinate. So we have eight degrees of freedom. And with eight degrees of freedom, we can do much better. So now you have to take the coordinates in the, in the source image, put it in the homogeneous coordinates, multiply by the inverse of H, and now you interpolate the, the source image at that location. And that will be the value that you have to put in the, in the J image, in the output image. So this is the same. Okay, again. And this is a particularization of, of image rotation. So in image rotation, uh, image rotation is, is just one of these transformation. So we know what age looks like for a, an image rotation. So we want to rotate the image. This uh, age has to be this form. I don't know what it is. I put the cosine. You have it somewhere there in the where is the cosine thing? Here. Okay. So age looks like this. Okay, so there is another consideration that is okay, so let's let's do it here. Okay, so let's say that I have an image. Have an image. And I rotate it. Okay, so I'll just try J. Let's put the coordinates. Not always, we don't always write the coordinates, but let's do it now. So this is a coordinate in J. So let's say that this is I evaluated at a rotation matrix times RJ. So this is I. Let's say that J is red. So if in I we have a, this image here, in J we will have this one, we will have this one. So the center of rotation is this one. But what happens with the movers? It's like this. So when you rotate the black image, the corners go out of the space of the of the arena uh, black image. So you can do something that is okay, I will embed it in a bigger image. So now my J will be bigger than the than the I. So the support will be bigger just to hold all the corners. Some other possibility is to is to keep the J I don't want this to get too messy. So let's do it again. So we have I, we 
I, yeah, uh, J, that was for AB. And then I will keep, so my, my new, my new J will be of the same size of I, only that in these corners, if you cut these corners, I don't have any information in the corners. Look at this. So when you rotate this part, this part of the image, this part of the image becomes becomes an answer. Becomes something fine. And yeah, so this is padding with zeros and, and here it is all this discussion. But I, I find it too detailed for uh, the purpose of our course. So let's say that we have an image of a given size, number of rows, number of columns of the input, and then when you rotate it, part of it, if you keep the output image to be of the same uh, size as the input, some part of it are undefined. And this is interesting. So let's say that this is my uh, origin of rotation. So now the, this is this is our image okay. i. This is our image i. This is the origin. So this is zero zero, and this is x. This is y. Now I rotate. I rotate with respect to this point. Get this one. So this is uh, this is x, this is y. So I have rotated from here to there. This is my theta, and um, and this is my my um, center of rotation. But what if my what if my zero zero is here? My zero zero is there. And then this is x. Y. So how can I express that center of rotation? And actually, I can put the center of rotation there anywhere. So I can rotate with respect to this one, I can rotate with respect to this one, this one, or this one. Okay, so let's say that R naught is my center of rotation. So I can take a coordinate of the original image. I can subtract the center of rotation. So we know that that is what, what that is doing is we have let's create it step by step again. So here in this coordinate system, this is my origin. My origin is there. So this is the zero zero. And now if I shift it to here. This is my new origin. So this is R now. And this is X, Y, prime. These are X, Y, X and Y. This is 0, 0. And 0, 0 is the corner. But now my 0, 0, in this coordinate system, this is my coordinate prime. Now, in my coordinate prime, I rotate by any angle. Okay, but I'm in this coordinate system. If I wanted to put it back to my original coordinate system, so let's call it J, I have to add again, I have to undo this, this shift. So this one was shifting the origin, this one shifting the origin from here to there. Now I have to undo it. Okay. Another way of, of seeing this is, is the following. So we can write it in this way. So Rj minus R0 is equal to H. R R minus R0 minus R0. So what we are saying is R J prime is equal to H R I prime. 
So this brings an interesting uh, point of view. That is, transformations are done with respect to a, an origin. And specifying the origin is important. Okay, so you can now rotate with respect to any point. All you have to do is to, to shift your coordinates to that point, express them as having the origin at that point, then you rotate and then you undo the rotation. So this part is interesting. So here you have that. So you have first you shift your origin to any location, then you rotate, and then you move it back. And you move it back arbitrarily to any other point. So again, you are free this two two uh, shifts. These two shifts. This one's here. So let's highlight them. So this shift. This shift and this shift they don't need to be the same. They can be the same, but they cannot. Okay, so here you have it, that idea. So you have a coordinate, you displace, you shift the, the origin of that coordinate system, then you rotate, and then you move it back to whatever you want. And yeah, now that there are a lot of uh, thinking about what is the size of the output image and the height of it. And we don't care about these things. So this is too detailed. Okay, but the idea is this one, that when you rotate an image, and in general, when you apply a, a geometrical transformation, the output can be bigger than the original one, or can be smaller. Uh, and then you have to decide what to do. What Do you want to keep the whole result, so the big image, or you just want to crop it the same size as they do, that is important. Um, yeah, so this is a, a lot of rewriting, a lot of these diagrams. Okay, so let's do some image rotation. So we have this that image, you rotate, so the transformation we know what it is. And you have to interpolate. So you have to say this point, remember, so we are here, we are here. here. So for every point in the transformed image, have to see where it is coming from in the source. And in general, that location will be fractional. So it will not be, when you multiply by this rotation matrix, it will not be an integer coordinate. So you have to interpolate. But we know already how to interpolate. Uh, you may remember from previous lectures, we have the nearest neighbor interpolation, the big cubic, the big linear interpolation. So you can compare, this is nearest neighbor interpolation, and we can compare the difference with of this image with respect to the big cubic and the bilinear. And yeah, those are the differences. Do they make sense? Where the differences are? In the edges. So the differences of the of the three different interpolation schemas, they are in the edges. So look at very flat areas. So very, very flat areas here, for instance. It is very flat, so we don't care. It, all the values are almost the same, so we don't care which interpolation scheme we use. We can use any one, all of them will give more or less the same result. But when you go to the borders, when you go to the edges, there, there are differences. Um, yeah, so here we have. All kind of, of comparisons. Also, we have these windows here. So we have this building, we rotate, 
at the windows. You see kind of funny pattern on top of the windows? You already know the name of that pattern. Eliasing. That is eliasing. And eliasing is, uh, doesn't happen with the linear equation. It does happen, but it is much, much less noticeable. And with the cubic, it's even less. And, and now we can be very creative about our transformation. So we have been describing five functions that have been very simple. It is just a matrix, a matrix multiplication. But why do that simple uh, transformations? We can find many more, uh, many more uh, interesting transformations. So, for instance, this one. This one here is okay. So let's say that you have let's say that you have a coordinate in the output. So you have to go from the target to the source. So I have a coordinate in the target. I compute what is the I, I put the middle uh, the origin at the middle. Now I compute what is the radius, what is the distance from that point to the middle. So this is this one. I can also compute uh, this arc tangent. So these are tangent. So this two is simply just to prove the 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 point in polar, in polar coordinates. So this is the point in polar coordinates. Now there will be a maximum a maximum distance. So the maximum distance is this one. Okay, in both directions, this one and this one. Okay, so this is the maximum distance. I can compute kind of normalized radius. This normalized radius will be the radius divided by the maximum radius, and then I compute the arc sign. And that gives me phi. Okay, now I compute phi multiplied by d naught. D naught is again the maximum distance, but now in the input image. So multiply phi times d naught, multiplied by this factor, and, and then I undo the polar coordinates. So the angle is the same, the angle is the same, but the distance is not. Okay, and then this is the point where I have to interpolate. So in this process of going from the source, the so, sorry, from the target to the source, once you have defined a way to go, you can be very creative. You can use very simple matrix multiplications, or you can use much more sophisticated things. And now if you apply this transformation to, the, to this image that we have, this image that we have, then this is what you get. This, this is like mapping that image onto uh, an spherical video. So now you can simulate spherical videos. Yeah. Um, the theta. Yeah. So theta here, this is the expression of going from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. This is polar. Okay. That's it. <coughs> and phi. This phi is a normalized radius. So you have the normal radius, you take the, the maximum radius that you can have in the output, and you divide this one by by this, so you divide this by this, and you compute the arc sign. This minus one is not one divided by sign, by this arc sign. So you like you simply uh, you you need to find uh, you have to define what your transformations are. But uh, these are coming from geometry. How if I want to map and a sphere onto a plane, this kind of this kind of uh, expressions appear. Okay, so we will not go into that, but you can you can put here whatever transformation you, you want. All you want is a way to go from output coordinates to input coordinates. If this makes sense or not, depends on the context, depends on what is your problem. Okay? In, in mapping a sphere, it, it makes sense. But uh, I can be whatever. Uh, 
And now you have a way to simulate uh, spherical mirrors. And actually, uh, these of having 360, 360, I'm very bad at drawing. So, say that this is our camera. We have a camera. And uh, you want to have a, a 360 view of this class. I cannot have it with a camera, right? Uh, I can point it in one, only one uh, direction. But what if I do the following? I put a stick here. I put a, a spherical mirror. This is a spherical mirror. So all the class, if I put it like this, the camera, all the class will be projected on this spherical mirror in all directions, the 360 directions. And my camera can see all these projections, all, all this information coming from the spherical mirror. So now my camera, what I will have is a 360 view of this class, but it is distorted. It is distorted in the same way <coughs> as this one. So this is what the camera would see. Kind of. and, and if you know how to go, know how to go from target to source. I don't know what it is. Yes. If you know how to go from target to source, you can invert it and you know how to go from source to target. So now I can invert that transformation. I can invert this transformation. So instead of simulating it, I can invert it and I can have now the, the 360 view. But it will not be a plain image anymore. It will be kind of, uh, again, I'm very bad at drawing, but would be an image that is in, in a cylinder. So this image would be somehow like here. So it will be painted here in the, in the inner side of my cylinder. You can, you can break your cylinder somewhere and unfold it. But this is, this is really, really interesting. So you can do many things by these, by these geometrical transformations. So you can correct respective images, you can uh, simulate all kinds of mirrors. And if you can simulate something, you can invert it. So now, if you have a, an image in the mirror, you can invert it and, 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 and decide what the, the image originally looked like. So, questions? Why, why this arc sign comes from here? So it is when, when you have your input image in a, in a sphere and you want to put it into an output, into a planar image, then these kind of expressions appear. They also appear when you go from uh, 3D uh, spherical coordinates. 3D spherical coordinates you also have this kind of arc signs and these things. <coughs> okay. Questions? Okay, so otherwise we, we do our exam today. Ah, now this thing. Now we understand this thing better. So now we understand this one. These are homogeneous transformations. This is no transformation. This is just a shift. This is a scale. This is rotation. This is shearing in X. So this population here. This is shearing in Y. 
This is a reflection. So this is a reflection around the point. This is a reflection about an axis and a reflection about another axis. So yeah, we now have the, the whole family. Okay, so there are no other questions. And, I, and now we understand better what these people here have been trying to do. So all this query on target, query on target is the source image reinterpolated according to the transformation that we have estimated. That in this case it was wrong. So you can try to play with the correspondences to make it a better to make a better match. Okay, so let's do our exam today. So this is the exam today. 